Good day, everyone. We will still be focusing on the Sharp EL738 calculator, and today's topic will be time value of money. So it's extremely important to understand the principle of time value of money. Money you have now is worth more than the identical sum in the future due to its potential earning capacity. The core principle of finance holds that provided money can earn interest, any amount of money is worth more the sooner it is received. You can do more with 100 rand today than what you will be able to do with it in 10 years from now. So obviously we have to use the various formulas that are given and it's important that you understand these formulas before attempting to understand the calculator. Please go through the formulas that's on the screen. It is just as a reminder, I'll be focusing on the calculator in this video. That is the calculator that you will be using. Older models can also be used and it will flow in the same uh, order, but this is the specific uh, version that I'll be focusing on. Very important to remember, before each new calculation, you must clear your calculator's memory as shown in the video titled Clear Memory and Reset. Let's look at our calculator and identify the important keys that we will be using in time value of money calculations. So let's understand the function of the keys. As I've mentioned, it is important to first understand the formula of compound interest before attempting to calculate it using the calculator. Understand the principle. That is extremely important. The keys that we will be using, we will now be focusing on individually. Let's first focus on N. N is the number of times that interest will be compounded within the investment period or period over which a loan is paid back or whatever your time value of money, money, money scenario is. For example, if you are investing an amount over five years and the question states that interest will be compounded monthly, how many periods will you have within that five years? Not five, but five times 12, you will have 60. So it's important to note that that amount, 60, is what needs to go into your calculator. So how do you put it into your calculator? You will press 60 and you will press the N key and then the calculator will save it. I'm just reiterating again. Remember to clear your calculator. Second function alpha. Please follow the video that I've mentioned in the beginning of this presentation. The next key is the interest key. There we have the interest that you need to insert into the calculator. This interest will be given to you in a question. However, it can also be asked. We will get to that part a bit later in this presentation. If you have the interest, say 12% or 15%, you will type in 15 and you will press the key. You don't have to worry about the 60 that we've explained to you in the previous slide. Your calculator is already programmed to use the 12% or the 15% or whatever interest rate you have in the correct way, using the 60 or the correct number of periods over which it will be compounded. So just to say again, if your interest rate is say 15%, you will click on 15, you'll enter 15 on your calculator and you will press the interest button. Next up is the present value. The value of the amount as it is now the current value of the loan or investment is typed in and then the present value button is pressed. As you can see where it's lo located. The very important thing that you need to remember at this with this key is that if you enter a value, remember if you pay something, it is technically an outflow. So you need to make that amount a negative. So present value, you type in the amount that you need to insert into your calculator as the present value, say 100 Rand, you will type in 100 and then you will press this key, the plus minus key. That will immediately change the sign in front of your 100 to a negative. It will put a minus there. And when it displays the minus 100, you press present value. Going to the next key is the payment. If payments are made at each entered time period, the amount is entered into the calculator as a negative and the payment is pressed. You don't always have payments, but say for instance, we invest 100 Rand today and we then continue to invest 10 Rand every month over the 60 months. 
that we are for the example that we are using at this point, you will say 10 Rand and you will press the PMT button. So always just remember if we are assessing the inflow of money, the value will then be a positive. If we are assessing the outflow, payments must be negative and inflows receipts must be positive. Always remember that concept, but that is what goes into the button. You press the payment that you make and you put it into the button. The calculator will use what you've already entered as the period, as the interest, the present value, com and combining the payment to calculate the future value. However, moving on to the future value, the future value can also be given. The important thing to remember here, as in, as in opposite with the present value, the future value will always be a positive. So the future value is the value that an investment will be at the end of the given period, using the interest rate over the period of the investment. If the future value is known, it will be entered into the calculator as a positive and the future value key will be pressed to save it and store it into your calculator. Now it's very important to remember that if we look at these five keys, in a question, one of them might not be given. They can give you all the information, but exclude, for example, the present value. Or they can give you all the information excluding the future value. Then the question will ask you to calculate that missing variable. Variable. How will you go about calculating this? You will select compute and then press the missing or the missing key or the, the, the element that you want to, to, to calculate. If you want to calculate what the present value is, then you will say compute and you will click on present value. Always make sure what the question asks. It is extremely important to read your questions very well.